Tabletop gamers have come up with three ways that I can think of to measure distance in games that use movement as a mechanic. There's a grid of one inch squares, there's a grid, if you can call it that, of hexagons, and then there's just a ruler or measuring tape. Over the past couple of decades, it's kind of emerged that square grids are for role-playing games, hex grids are for sci-fi role-playing games, and maybe sometimes war games, and then raw measuring tape or a ruler is definitely just for war games. But there's a lot of value to a hexagon, and given the choice, I tend to use a hex grid over squares or even rulers, and here are six reasons, because it's a hexagon, six reasons I like to use hexes no matter what game system I'm playing. One, how much does diagonal movement actually cost? It happens every time I'm playing Pathfinder or Tales of the Valiant, there's always the question of how do you move diagonally? Like in real life, none of us actually think about like, oh, how do I move diagonally? How do I get from this point to another point in the shortest amount of time? But when you're playing an RPG or a game on a square grid, it always comes up. Whether you express it or not, you feel like guilty for moving diagonal, like you're gaming the system. The irony is, of course, that it's a game. You're supposed to game the system. But I think the, the actual problem is that on a square, you can only turn in 90 degree increments. When you drive a car in real life, you understand that turning involves a radius. You can't just turn on a dime. But on a square grid, we learn, without thinking about it, the inverse. That you can only turn in increments of 90 degrees. And so moving at a 45 degree angle just doesn't feel right. It feels like you're breaking the rules of the game world. And that's because you are. If you're allowed, say, four squares of movement, you can do that horizontally, two, vertically, two more, that's four. Perfect. Or you could just do that diagonally in literally two moves. On a hex grid or a hex map, everything's diagonal. You pinpoint a place on the map that you want to go, and then you move there. Two, lazy measuring. In a war game, movement is usually expressed in inches or centimeters if you're lucky. I love this because it means you can set up miniatures on any flat surface and play. You don't need a special map, grid paper, anything like that. Except, I'm a lazy and impatient gamer. The truth is, among friends, we don't bother measuring. I mean, we mean to. We we have rulers, and for the first few squad advances, we do use them, and after that, we just eyeball everything. Does that look like five inches to you? Yeah, sure, close enough. The reality is, I, I can't be bothered to measure movement in friendly war games. For whatever reason, the act of measuring from base to destination without knocking over terrain or other miniatures, it's just too much work. I have soldiers to kill and objectives to secure. I don't have time to measure. And a good hex map solves that problem. I designed a little hex map for me and my friends. It's a neoprene thing with little zones marked out in blue and orange to help us figure out where to deploy. And then we just play on that and we count hexes and never measure. Because it, it actually did take a little bit of time to design, I'm, I'm selling it on Printify if you want a copy of your own. That way you don't have to go through the, uh, the pain of lining up hexes like I did. But it, it's a really useful little mat and, and I play lots of games on it. Three, inside every hex is a hidden square. It's always been my impression that the tradition of using a square grid for fantasy role-playing games arose from dungeon design being done on graph paper, because graph paper is super common and you can do that pretty easily. I could be wrong, but certainly that's why I always used square maps for my games. I have my graph paper notebook, I sketch dungeons into it, and so when I take players through the dungeon, I use a large grid so I can transfer my sketch onto a big player map. You can't do that on a hex map, right? No, I, I mean yes. No, sorry, I said no meaning yes. No meaning yes? You can. Inside every hexagon, there's a hidden rectangle. I've heard from some game masters that they have to turn the hex map a little to see it with like in an alignment that their brains can perceive without overthinking it but if you, if you look at a hex map you do start to see the square grid within those hexes and then you can draw your dungeon walls and doorways and pit traps why are you drawing those your players aren't supposed to know about those uh, and so on exactly as you sketched out in your notebook
Four, ignore the offcuts. When I was first switching over to a hex map, I spent way too much energy trying to force my hexes into one inch increments, because as everybody knows, an inch is five feet in D&D, so you can't violate that rule, right? Well, you know what? It doesn't matter. It's a game, and as long as everything on the game board is using the same scale, the playing field is basically level. Your monsters aren't at a disadvantage, and neither are the player characters. Everyone's moving forward or diagonally or sideways on the same hex. Learning to embrace imprecision in your RPG or your war game, I think, is a key to keeping your game, well, a game. When you worry about those sixteenth of an inch corners on a hex and what it means for a game when in fact that soldier only has four inches of movement, then you might be a rules lawyer. That's not a bad thing, it means you know every last detail of your game system and that's very impressive, but if you're in it to have fun, it can help to surrender to a little friendly imprecision. 5. Turning rules. In some games, turning matters. Like, the way that you're facing actually counts for something. It, it might seem strange to, like, an RPG player or even to a skirmish war gamer, but, like, big vehicles or monsters often have to use up movement just to change their current trajectory. You can do that on a square grid by just counting off an extra square or two of movement, depending on your rules as you move your miniature, but with hexagons you can often map every move a miniature makes to its movement allowance, whether that move is from one hex to another or just turning 60 or 120 or 180 degrees to face a different direction. Six. Hex crawls and alternative rules. Interestingly, many role-playing games already use hex maps for some portion of the game, like for overland travel, or otherwise provide rules for both square and hex maps. But if you're just using hex maps, then all you need is one kind of grid. You don't have to switch between square grids and hex grids for different things. For overland travel, you're going to use a hex map, and then for localized regional travel, you're going to use a square. Don't worry about using two different things, just use one thing and it's called a hex map. Sometimes though, the real trick is finding hex pages paper, like paper with hexagons tiled across it endlessly from edge to edge. Square grid paper is very common. It's used across a lot of industries and in, in, within the educational market. Hexagons, on the other hand, are pretty specific to gaming, I think. It's a little bit more difficult to find hex paper. You can find some hex battle mats, like the ones for Battletech. They're all laid out with hexagons on them. Some space battle games also provide hex maps, so you can find them, but it, it is a little bit more difficult. And for my own use, as I said, I've created a hexagon neoprene mat for my games, and I've also created a blank hexagon grid paper book so that I can draw dungeons with hexagons as my tiles. They have an overlay of the squares that sort of are hidden within those hexagons. It takes a little bit of get, getting used to because it's sort of like a full square and a half square, full square and a half square, which is, of course is exactly the problem with diagonal movement, and, and you kind of see that on display here. But if you're designing a dungeon, and like I said earlier, you just kind of forget about the, the, the inequality of, of the squares within your, your floor plan, and just trust that the hexes won't let you down, it works really, really well. So that's why squares aren't as good as hexagons. Change my mind. You can't. Thanks for watching.